from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yo, it's your boy, holla back. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where we talk about the issues you really care about. Coming up, this our comedian Brad Garrett is coming to the studio. Brad's never been on the show before. Never been in. So we'll have him in here in just a few minutes. He's uh, appearing at the Laugh Factory on the Sunset Strip. And, uh, oh, in Long Beach. Okay. I didn't realize, you know, I know they talked about the Laugh Factory opening in Long Beach, but uh, because I have not strolled down the uh, boulevards, streets, and avenues of Long Beach in a while, I didn't realize they'd actually opened. Brand new Laugh Factory in Long Beach. Okay. Good. So Brad Garrett is coming up in a few minutes here. In the meantime, we are taking your telephone calls. A guy in Pompano Beach announced that <laughs> he found an image of Jesus on the last piece of French toast that he consumed. Said he's not going to sell the piece of French toast. <laughs> well, that's very nice. You won't find them on eBay. Trying to unload this piece of French toast. But, uh, you know, he's hoping it'll stand as a testament to faith and, you know, make you more of a believer. That's what he said. And uh, I say I can't take people like this seriously. And why shouldn't you be able to discriminate against them? It's Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. How are you, Tom? I'm doing okay. Well, I know your religious standpoint and views, so I don't want to be disrespectful, but I am a, a Christian person, and I'm also African-American, and I had to call in because it is so offensive to me, being both a Christian and African-American, to hear callers relate the struggles and what we've gone through as African-Americans in the civil rights movement to homosexuality. I think it is so far off base. The two do not compare in any way other than a struggle. Um, I am not homophobic. I'm not against homosexuals. I have a sister-in-law that's homosexual, and I accept her. I talk to her. I deal with her. She's at family gatherings, and it's fine. Everyone is entitled to choose to be whatever they want to be. But I personally choose to not be homosexual. I am heterosexual, and... You can't, and I think it's unnatural. I think homosexuality is un, is not unnatural. So thing you think your your sister is actually straight? No, I think that we all make a choice. It's the same as if well, you want so to Well, so you call say us. your your sister made a choice. She could be straight, but she well, chose she was to be straight. gay. She was married. She has children. But and that then, doesn't mean she was straight. It means that. Maybe she felt that you wouldn't accept her. Other family members would not accept her. And so she tried to do it your way. And that could be possible. I am just not taking on the belief that they were born this way. And I'm going to have a million people calling behind me that disagree with me. And that's fine. That's why we all have an opinion. We all have freedom of speech. But you understand, people are also not born Christian. Uh, they are not born Muslim, okay? Everybody right. makes a choice. So, based on your logic, we should also be able to discriminate against people uh, for their religious beliefs. Yes, I believe that you, so you can agree discriminate. With that? I believe that you can do whatever you personally want to do. Really? So, Whether if I don't want to, it's everybody's choice to do what they want to do. So, now, if you as a Christian say, uh, "I'm claiming Sunday as the Sabbath and I'm not working," mm -hmm. uh, then you're saying that I have the right to say, "Because you're a Christian, I'm not hiring you." You do, but unfortunately, no. But I don't. Are, are, I don't. But I don't. Let me. I know, but let me finish. There are. There are laws that protect certain things from people fighting to get those laws to protect them, such as affirmative action and all of these other things. I don't think affirmative action is right. I understand that. And that's a whole other question. But we're talking specifically now about religious beliefs. Okay. So you're saying you, you would accept the idea of changing the law so that uh, it would be legal to discriminate against people and therefore not hire them or not rent apartments to them or... 
uh, whatever, uh, because of their religion? Well, let me put it like this, because it's a tough question, and I, I want to answer. No, it should be an easy for yes you. It should no. be an easy question because you believe it's okay to discriminate against gay people because it's unnatural and it's a choice. I no, let me finish what I'm saying. It's not about discriminating against gay people. What I'm sure talking is. about is no. What I'm calling about is comparing gay rights to Understood. civil rights. But did to, you well, vote? Not even civil rights. African did you in, rights. did you vote for or against California Proposition Eight? I actually voted no on it. Oh, good. Okay. I actually voted no on it, good. and then later I had a conversation with someone that brought something to my attention and it made me think they said when you're in that voting booth and you're making a decision on what you're going to vote for or against it's really what works for you you're not supposed to be wondering about the joe blow down the street and this person and that person it's what works for you and if that's what you feel and i had a different opinion when i was in there my opinion was i'm gonna vote for what works for the masses what is going to help the masses and really that's not how you're supposed to vote. Oh, so should I then, since I'm in the highest tax bracket, uh, does that mean I should have voted for John McCain instead of Barack Obama uh, because I don't want my taxes raised and I should have done what was good for me? Should I have done well, that? Well, I am also in a higher tax bracket because I make over 250000 but taxes are only one aspect of what a candidate can offer. So when I weighed all of the, the, the various a aspects and all of the things that were important to me and the issues that were on the table with the war and the condition of the economy, my taxes, the possibility of my taxes getting higher became very small. And what benefit I, is there to discriminate against gay people? What's the benefit? Okay, well, here's the thing, Tom. I am not saying that people should discriminate against gay people. That's not well, you what I'm said saying. people should do what works for them uh, when they're in the voting booth. And I, that implies that if you're against gay marriage, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, you should have voted uh, for Proposition 8. You're absolutely right. I did think about it later that I should have done what worked for me personally and not the masses. But, you know, that to me, that's like a whole nother conversation. And I'm sorry to, to not address it the way that you want me to head on. But I have a lot of conflicts going on in my head about. Well, I just I just let's just take let's take let's just take this simple matter that uh, by making gay marriage again unconstitutional or illegal. Uh, what you've done now is you've subjected. Of course, you voted no. But I'm saying those who did uh, uh -huh. subjected us to. Uh, traffic snarling protests, expensive lawsuits, lawsuits that are going to go on and on and on and on and on and on. Right. And so even though you may not agree with gay marriage, how do you feel as a taxpayer having to spend all that money defending it? And that was one of the things that I took into consideration. I, so you did do what we, so you I did do, out. so you did do what worked for you. That's a double-ended sword. No. It is a double-ended sword because what works for me morally and what works for me politically and financially... Well, I thought you add up all the factors. That's what you just told me about voting for Obama. It doesn't bother me when I think about the fight and all the legislatures and having to pay for all of this stuff. That does not... No, if you don't me. like gay marriage, go down to your church, meet with a pastor and tell him. We don't want a gay marriage in this church. Well, and my then, church wouldn't allow a, a gay marriage to take place, whether well, a law was passed or not. So there so, you go. So it, well, why uh, do we have to have all this controversy? Because there are people who are very passionate about... No, there are people who want to inflict their religious views on the rest of us. And I'm not one of those people. I didn't say I'm you were. I didn't say right. you were, but that's what we have. 
Right, you're absolutely right. Now, I, I understand your original point, and, 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 and we've kind of forgotten it. I want to get back to it before I let you go, and that is, okay. I understand, you know, I, I saw all the TV commercials, and for people who don't live in California who didn't get to see these, maybe you hit YouTube up and see what the TV commercials looked like for Proposition 8. I mean, some of it was outrageous. And um, I saw that one particular commercial uh, voiced by a presumably African-American, Mm -hmm. uh, talking about previous struggles in the civil rights movement and uh, comparing the struggle of, of gays and lesbians to achieve equality uh, to the struggle for civil rights for blacks uh, and others in the 60s and 50s and what have you. No, there's no way that you can come here. And that's no. what makes me angry. And no, I, I understand. Have what I was trying to tell you is I understand why that makes you angry. Everybody's fight for equality, everybody's fight to be recognized stands on its own. And uh, I don't think, for one thing, if you wanted to get the thing passed, I don't think that would be even an effective way of doing it, even if there were people who agreed. Uh, it, you know, a case has to stand on its own merit. Well, what this lady that just called in a little while ago was giving statistics that 70% of African Americans had voted uh, yes on Prop 8, and she didn't understand that, the Cuban lady that called in, she didn't understand that. And it, it makes me upset when I hear people, and it also makes other African Americans that I talk to and I am friends with upset because I, we don't feel as though you can compare that to the plight of black people. And the same as, I mean, let's get off so the So you're saying, well. so in, in short, and I'm running out of time here, but in short, what you're saying is, and I've heard others say it, you think the reason that blacks voted against gay marriage and for Proposition 8 is because they were offended by that advertising? Well, you got to remember the whole uh, term down low came from the African-American community because it is just now becoming more accepted in our community. It was very, very unacceptable for especially the men to be gay. So they had to go on the down low and hide. And and it's, a, it's just different. We don't accept it as much as other races, and now we're being forced to accept it. So I think that that's but, why... But you are, you saying, so are you saying the resistance is for moral reasons? Um, I think it's a combination in some cases because a lot of people have the Southern Baptist upbringing, but I don't think it's just moral. Um, someday, think, well, someday we should have a, a, a broader discussion about this uh, specifically, you know, it, how that can be a morality issue. But the high number of children born out of wedlock to African American mothers, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, the large amount of adultery that right, uh, goes still, on, I know and, you're and still that's, comparing it to something that's unnatural. I don't agree with. Oh, uh, you're, so you're saying adu adultery is natural? It's not that it's natural. Fornication outside of marriage is natural. Okay, well then why don't we start comparing other things? Why don't we compare obesity? Why don't we compare bestiality? I mean, we can't just pick two things and say adultery versus gay. I mean, this thing can go on and on and on and well, on. Well, you know, people... when you when you advertise yourself as a Christian, when not just you, but anybody, if they say that's the reason for believing something, well, you know, Christianity is not like a menu at a Chinese restaurant. You don't take one from column A and one from column B. Uh, the fact is that if you accept uh, one part of it, you have to accept the whole thing, right? Okay, well, let's talk about this really quick. Let's go back to the adultery issue, okay? If a person commits adultery, yes, that's against the Bible, and that is considered a sin. Now, if a person commits adultery with a 10-year-old, it's now a crime, and you now go to prison. So when we talk about... Well, then we're not talking natural, about morality. Now we're talking about uh, inflicting uh, yourself uh, against someone else and violating the rights of that person, which is a whole separate issue. You know, I've enjoyed talking to you, Michelle. We'll, uh, we'll do it again, but uh, I have to run. I thank you guys for your calls. All right, coming up, Brad Garrett in studio. Stay right there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Hollywood. 
And Brad Garrett is here. Good to see you. How are you, Tom? Good, Good. to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. How have we not had you on before? Uh, well, you probably know my act and figured, <laughs> why would I do that to myself? And there's so many people. I don't know, but, man, I'm a fan, so this is a, this is a treat to be here. I think you and I uh, have a lot in common. Is that so? Yeah. Not only back hair, but a lot of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of things. A lot of things. Really? Well, I think so. I think our views are similar a little bit. Such you know? as? Oh, I know I have to hear about this. Well, I know I know you're in a menudo. I yes, know, I know of course. You don't, I know you were never the same since the breakup. That's exactly right. They are, and, they um, are re- reuniting, by the way. I know you're into glitter, <laughs> uh, fuzzy things, anything yes. that shines. That's right. And Russian dressing. This is what, I, again, I got all this from your bio. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> You tell the women what time it is, and I like that. Every time I do that, I lose a house. But you, uh, you do it all the time, and they just uh, they give you better offices. Yeah. But um, the trick is not to give them the key. Is it? Yeah. See that's see that's the thing. That's the thing. I bail because I have no no vision of self. Yes. So I give them a key. Now when I go out the first second date, if it's I just bring all of my half of all of my crap. I just put it in the trunk. <laughs> And I just deliver it when I say goodnight, right out the gate, which is getting less and less, by the way. Less and less crap of mine is uh, is distributed. But um, how did you vote on eight? Because I heard you you talking. Do you let that stuff out? Yeah, I do. No, I I voted no on eight. What is every... Why why wouldn't you? I'm not getting it. I'm not getting the the issues. I think, well, uh, what you have here, I think, is... Uh, first of all, you had the Mormon Church spend twenty million dollars on those commercials, right? And then you add in the Knights of Columbus that spent some money also, okay? Because the Catholic Church couldn't do it directly, so the Knights of Columbus kind of did it as an right. adjunct. They came in there too, right? And the Mormons that are now these are the people that have the ranches with everyone wearing the uh, the Mrs. Butterworth outfit. That's exactly right. Right, and they they take them in the back <laughs> and they think they're going to a petting zoo and they <laughs> they end up going, I can't feel my legs. It's these people, right? Those ones, yes. Okay, so they're 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 okay. So they don't want people being happy. What else do we have? Uh, and then. Uh, what they've been saying in the newspaper yes. is that you have a large number of African Americans who came out to vote because right. we have an African American president. Right, I in. went that way too, and proud of it. Yes, yep. and, and so did I. Great, but uh, it has. But I hear you voted for the white side of him. I don't know if that's true, Tommy. Well, you did had you to go. You had to take both sides. You had to. Okay, you had to take the package. Okay. Yes, okay. I love Honolulu. I don't know about anybody else, <laughs> but I, uh, I think we should all go back, pick the cane, and just just <laughs> yodel while we're in the canoe. <laughs> All right, Tom. So now what they're saying is that uh, a number, and again, I'm just telling you what the paper said. Right, because they don't lie. No, 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 no. And there's only a few pages of the paper still coming out. Have you noticed the paper is like the size of a pamphlet it's now? Getting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. One of the few remaining pages of the paper uh, indicated there's a feeling that a number of African Americans voted yes on eight because they were offended by a TV commercial that compared the struggles of gays and lesbians to the civil rights struggles of the 60s, and they were offended by that. Yeah. I so see. one of the TV commercials may have done them in. I, well, okay, that's that, that's interesting. Did they, did they do that? Because I don't remember the clothes being that snappy in Alabama. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how that works. But is, is it, isn't it supposed to be equality for all? I mean, isn't yes. that, does, it really, does it really threaten the straight marriages that are going so well with the 85% <laughs> divorce rate? I mean, they want, to, they want to maintain, they want to restore the marriages of the hetero. And, and keep it and keep it as pure and wonderful as it is. Yes. So don't let don't let gay people marry and and, and be happy. Is uh, is that really what are are, are they are, are they that threatened I, by by that? Do you think? I, I, well, here's what's amazing to me. Yeah. I, why would gay people want to get married, having been married and divorced four times? Right. I just want to say. Yeah. It, look. You got to be careful what you wish for. If if you're gay and you yeah. really want to get married, right. I am totally in favor because I want you to find out what pure hell is all about. Okay, thank you. But you see, I think I think they're a lot happier. I think I think I I, I rarely I rarely you know see they're gay happier because they fight. can't get married. Right. You know, they've got the perfect right. excuse. Yeah, here you are, you're in a relationship. Now, right. imagine you're in a relationship. With, and, and, Hardly. And, uh, well, imagine if you are. Without the restraining order. Right. And, okay. and, and a woman says, come on, when are you going to ask me to get married? You say, I would love to marry you, but right. unfortunately, 
it's illegal. Oh, wait. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Proposition 9. Take away my right to get married. Take my rights away. I like that. See, I, I'm going to start marching again. <laughs> really. Because that's the only reason why I'm, I, I'm not gay. I am too big to get the right clothes. <laughs> you know? The ascot is, is, is merely a watch band for the giant Jew. That's, that's the problem. It's amazing that with all that's going on in the world, it's, it's about who can marry and who isn't. That's exactly right. But that's not why I'm, why I'm here. I'm here for my own foundation, Jews with bad credit. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about it, Tommy. I know you got good credit. I do. I, ran, I know your, your, your score is high. Yes. You're in the nines, right, Tommy? There is no nines. <laughs> Is there, seriously? 850 is as high as you can go. Is that, is that, and are you in the eights? I'm in the eights. Are you really? Yeah. Well, you don't go for air. I've seen you spend. You, know, you open the wallet, Tom, the back came out. You're not big on it, right? Do you, do you, do you still, go, I mean, is it true when you go out with the broads, it's really Dutch? You don't do that. Do it's, you? it's beyond Dutch. I trick them into not having dinner with me. <laughs> so dine with no pants. No, no, no. Probably no. is the key. No. Well, the way you do it is you call a chick up and you say, uh, right. hey, what time are you having dinner tonight? Right. And so she'll answer. She'll say, oh, I don't know, 7.30, Why? You should be done about 9.30. Why don't we hook up for a drink about 9.30? I love that. And they don't realize you've just done them out of dinner. I love that. And in these tough times, it's important for people to have every technique at their disposal. I think that's good. Yeah. I really, really like that. It or works. just go for Indian food. <laughs> You could just do that. And when they walk the spaniel through the room, you order the pudding. That's, I love that. What time you have your dinner? We'll enjoy. See, that's good. See, that's, see, I'd have so much more money if I knew you before. I like it. I know, of if course. If I knew you before. We'll take a break. We'll come back with Brad Garrett and your telephone calls coming up here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Uh, Brad is going to be at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach coming up this Saturday with two shows at 8 at 10 o'clock. And you can call the Laugh Factory at 562-495-2844 if you'd like to see him in person. We'll take some calls for Brad Garrett coming up. Tom. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800. 866 The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. We're here with Brad Garrett. Yep. Oh, this is fun here, man. Oh, yeah. You're just getting to look at the, I'm the screen of the calls coming. Yeah, there's two. Actually, one still has a question about uh, euthanasia. I don't know how long ago you got into that. Um, and the other one wants to know my weight. Boy, my career is going well, isn't it? And here's another. How do we get tickets to Ray Romano? I don't know why you'd hurt someone. You're not going to work. Oh. Where's your TV show? What happened? Well, you know what's funny? This is Fox has come up with a new thing. We're going to air it at a time that's good for you. <laughs> it's the first network where you could actually call in and go 740 on Saturday and the, done. It's beyond TiVo. It's your personal TiVo. You could you could um yeah, it's uh it's it's out there. It's you know we're 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 still filming away and um um I I think it's going to be uh back to back with Punky Brewster. <laughs> They're bringing back that and um, and blossom. <laughs> but no, we're going to be a uh, 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 we're technically on Wednesday nights at nine, just not in America <laughs> right now. We're huge in Tibet, and, um, and listen, as long as I'm airing in Thailand, which I hear I am, because you know I need a I need a little love. <laughs> Let's take some phone calls here for Brad Garrett. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Here's Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How's it going? It's going great. What's up, Brian? Hey, what's up, Brad? How's How you it going, doing, man? Heaven's eye. You badass Jew, you. Yeah, that's right. That's Everybody's right. Everybody's trying to kick some TMZ ass. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, that's you know. Don't believe what you see on video. 
you know, that's all I can tell you. It wasn't, uh, it was just, a, it's just, uh, you know, my date had homework and I was just trying to get her. <laughs> just trying to get her back to the crib. Come on, hey, I love to see that type of stuff, man. Well, look, you know what? I, I'm, uh, look, I don't, I don't, um, condone stuff like that, but to be honest, I, I, you know, I'm a large man. I'm yeah. a large man. Think of B. Arthur with uh, a smaller jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to get to my car and, uh, you know, this, this, this cat was uh, just literally the camera was was uh, uh, in the way of my gate, and I, I asked you know to move. And but you know it's all it's all it's all good, and you know we got to put a, a the, these paps are just I love how they go. Uh, Did you uh, yeah, I'm a photojournalist. <laughs> Did you, know? you ever pick up the pieces after you broke his camera? I didn't pick up the pieces. I didn't. But I removed uh, my lens cap from Area 57 about an hour ago. Hey, I love Brad, how they go, I'm a photojournalist. What's that? Are you going to be down in Long Beach on Friday? I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to be down in Long Beach at the new Laugh Factory, uh, two shows uh, on Saturday. I'll see you there. Uh, are you going to be there? I'll be there. All right, man. I would love to see you. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. You there got he goes. It goes. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like he won tickets. He didn't seem really committed. <laughs> Got it in the, the penny saver as a, as a cutout. <laughs> that or he lives near Long Beach. That could be. In which case, it yeah. would be convenient to just drop in. Yes, it would be. What else would you do? Exactly. Uh, it's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Dan Tanners, I, you know, I eat at Dan Tanners all the time. I've never right. seen that kind of commotion. Well, you know, it was it was odd. I think they 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 seriously they either thought I was you know bull in night court. I think that's what caused the uh, the onslaught, or else it's just you, you know, like I say, if they're coming after me, it's a very slow night in Hollywood, you know. But um, it you know they're just getting more and more bold and in your face. And you know what? You know what doesn't make sense to me? And maybe I, I know no one knows a law like you, Tom. If you're a truck driver or a dentist or just a, someone that's not a performer, it, it's stalking and harassment. And what's scary is these people who are photojournalists in the same way that strippers or choreographers, if you know what I'm saying, yeah. um, feel that they can literally follow you and obstruct your 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 space and really get in your face. And you know, you would think with that disaster with Princess Diana. Which was really, you know, they want to make it look like it was a conspiracy. It was paparazzi induced. And these are the same guys after the crash, these, these sickos, these scumbags that are taking pictures of her as she lies in state in that car. These are the same, same people. So what I'm saying is where, where does it stop? Where they don't have a right to us. I think if I'm, if I'm at a pet store with my kids who are minors, I don't think they have a right to follow me, take pictures of my children and put them on the internet. Now, if they did that to a regular guy, that would be not allowed. No, actually, it would be allowed, but here's the thing. It would? Yes, but there was a time yes. when the paparazzi took pictures of they caught you doing something. Right. They found you out with somebody who's not your wife, or they right. found you doing something bad, yes. and they would take pictures of that and sell it to the National Enquirer. Right. Uh, now they take pictures, they'll just take pictures of you waiting for your car to be brought around, or... Or buying an ointment. Uh, uh, exactly. Yes, which is not good. I was it, buying a salve the other day at... <laughs> at uh, yeah, it's it's really it's really Who's really odd. Who's looking at these pictures? I mean, Who that's... cares? I can't get them to watch my show. Are they really going to look at a picture of me? You know, getting Simonized or, or whatever it is. It's all it's all insanity. It's just it you know the insanity. wheels have come off, and they're really you know first of all a lot of these guys with due respect you know they're hiding in bushes all day. What they really need is they need a big men and stick. <laughs> what these guys need is to be hosed off you know in front of the uh, you, you know. I mean, it's 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 a motley bunch to say to say the best. But take a picture and 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 move on. Let a person get to the car. Don't blind them in an alley with these. Sh I, you know, and it's 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 just gotten to the point where it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's I think it's stalking. I think it's bored. And there, are, look, there. Are, believe me, you know, much bigger names out there that have to put up with this on a much larger scale, and they don't have a right to us. You know, one of them yelled, "If you don't like it, don't leave your house." Well, well, you know, what does that mean? That's outrageous. Could, could you imagine that? Ah, that's crazy. Yeah, because, you know, so it's just, but, but hey, it was just it was just one of those nights. Uh, you know, I got bad service at Dantana's, and I think I brought some of that to the parking lot with me. The parking lot to me.
<laughs> Brad Garrett is here. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I love both you guys. Hey, Brad, my question to you is how many marriage are... How many marriages are you up to now, and are you now done with the whole marriage thing? Me? I've been married once, and uh, am I done? Yeah, I, I don't see why I would ever get married again. You know, it, it, it's probably not for me. I'm probably someone that should really just live alone uh, for the rest of his life, just to, you know, to help society, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and womankind. I just, I just think there are some people that probably are not the marrying type. And I, 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 I had a great wife and it was, it was, de- you know, I'm a strong cup of coffee. You ever been married, Tom? Uh, a couple times. And, uh-huh. uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you gotta stop doing it at some point. Right. Well, you have more than me, so. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, what are you I, trying I, to prove, Tom? I would Tom? recommend that you, uh, you chill out on that. Should I chill? All right. You, all right. <laughs> uh, I will, I won't get married till you get married for the third time. All right, I'll call you. Be careful, man. <laughs> it's Rodney on the Tom Likas Show for Brad Garrett. Hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's a pleasure. Uh, Tom, uh, first time, but um, I'm really enjoying you, Brad. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, tell you I'm a, a fan. This is the first time I actually heard you, but I'm a fan of your quick wit. And I wanted to know if, I, uh, if you had any information regarding our website. I can tell. Uh, probably get in contact. This is um, the first time you've heard Brad Garrett? You've never seen him on TV? Not, not at all. In regards really? To Do you get Fox? <laughs> I, I've, been in, I've been in the cave, though. I really have been in the cave. And, uh, why have you been in the cave, man? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Triple life? Talk to me, Rodney. <laughs> what, why are you in a cave? I just wanted to make sure that you understood that's the only reason I haven't heard of Brad uh, Garrett. Believe me, if you, if you want to meet people that haven't heard of me, the line is, I think, right now going down Melrose. Uh, but, uh, um, but, uh, that's but nice I of you. Have, Thank you. But I am a, a fan in regarding this. It doesn't take me long, really, to hear what I, I'm By the way, in February for. 2009, uh, all TV is going digital. You have to get your coupon from the federal <laughs> government. Yeah, there you go. It's another thing. Unless you voted no on eight. <laughs> Yeah, and then you just oh. have to look at Laverne and Shirley and go, that could have been me. <laughs> I'm just, again, I just uh, wanted to tell you, um, this first kind call was um, in relation to uh, both you guys. Just what kind of got me over the hump was hearing the uh, satire and the actual real life humor of uh, uh, Mr. Garrett. And I just wanted to probably get a website. Maybe you can uh, let me uh, know about that on the uh, air later on. You, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a website, wow. Rodney, but I would love for you to start one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe close your eyes and swing dot com, and it's my tribute to the, it's my tribute to all the paps out there who have trouble putting a sentence together. A lot of them are like, look this way, look this way, look this way, look this way. I'm really not sure what that is. They're fresh out of most of the guys who take my picture, fresh out of flight school, where they're either lighting their shoe on fire as they're waiting for a, you know, southwest. I would, okay, Rodney left. He's he's back there to he goes. A, That's back. right. Thank you, Rodney. He's, he's back to Dane Cook. Brad Garrett's going to be at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach this Saturday. Yes. One night only, two shows, 8 and 10 o'clock. We'll continue with more of your telephone calls coming up. Tom like it. like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And we are here with Brad Garrett. He'll be at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach this Saturday. 8 and 10 p.m., 562-495-2844. Go to LaughFactory.com. See Brad live. It's a great room. It's a great room. Laugh Factory uh, has always been a great room and uh, fun to watch and also fun to play there. Yes, yes. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, I, I'm from L.A. I started doing stand-up in L.A. a long, long time ago. And uh, Jamie Masada, who owns the uh, Laugh Factory, is just such a, a great guy with, with giving people a leg up when they're starting out, and, and he just he just is. So you know what I'm? I, I said, why not? We'll Did he introduce and... you to Michael Jackson too? By the way, uh, well, it was kind of strange. It was cr- just bubbles. It was you know because I have a pri- I have a, of a big forehead, Tom. I have a primate thing happening, and 
And uh, God, I wanted I wanted Neverland. I told Ray, I told Romano because he's got you know he's got all the bank. Yeah. You know, and he's t- he's got like a gift house in his shop. It's unbelievable. It's like towels with Doris Roberts on it. <laughs> no, really, it rubs off. I said, buy Neverland, buy Neverland. Take your twins, just lose them out there. Yeah, there you, you know, go. <laughs> right, you could get Neverland for a. But he's innocent. He just he just wants to live in uh, Dubai. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number here. Let's say hello to Jorge on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Jorge. Hello, a huge fan of both of you. I just had a quick question for Brad. Um, where can I get a movie you made about nine years ago called Facade? I've been looking for it for nine years. I haven't that, been able to find it. I'll tell you what. That's interesting. That's the scary thing about the internet. It gave me a credit in that movie. Never been in the movie. And there's an, also they credit me for being in uh, uh, Eight Men Out or Nine Men Out. Wasn't in that movie either. But you I were, have. You were in Facade. You had the line that said, "You turn to the guy. You're stopped by a cop, and you say, a country at peace will turn on its own citizens.'" I, I never, was I was never in the movie. I'm telling you, I never did the movie. You know, you, you, you see, you see, my movie career kind of mirrors my social life. I'm picky and not in demand. So I, I, I really, I, I mean, I mean, you were in it. I remember you clearly. Well, listen, I, I used to hit the bottle pretty good in the uh, in the eighties. Were you sober nine years ago? Uh, yes, I've been sober eleven years. Actually, okay. hasn't hasn't helped. It, um, might, it, was, it was on VHS when I got it, so it might have been 13 years ago made. So, well, I don't know. Well, well I have to tell you, my brother. I, 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 w- I, w- I mean, if I had a copy, now I have, I have about 400 copies of The Pacifier <laughs> on DVD. <laughs> Actually, they played that on a move. Uh, they played that on an airline uh, four months ago. Three people walked out. <laughs> Hold me, Tommy. Show me on the dolly, Tom. Show me on the dolly where the big Jew touched it, Tommy. No. It's, uh, or well, you can get your music and lyrics. I have that on beta. Okay. Well, thank you. And um, I'm, I'm pretty you. sure it was you, but... Uh, no, I, I'm pretty sure it was you. Must, this is I unbelievable. Must, I must have been drunk myself. First, first of all, I don't think they'd hire a guy like me to even say that line. But, but, um, uh, but thank you. No, I, I never did the film. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Jorge. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's Jay on the Tom Likas show for Brad Garrett. This could be Leno. Hey, no, not Leno. Not Leno. Hey, I was the tournament director when you did the charity tournament over in Inglewood, California. Brad. Oh, at, at Hollywood Park. Oh, Jay, Bye. yes, Jay. Jay is unbelievable. I did. Um, uh, I have my own foundation who I started with with my ex wife, and we're amazing friends. Actually, thank goodness. And it's the Maximum Hope Foundation, and it helps uh, families that are dealing. Uh, with with the incredible obstacles of of having children who were ill and terminal, and and I did my first poker tournament for Maximum Hope Foundation, and Jay put it together for me at Hollywood Park. Wait, do you play poker, Tommy? You seem like a poker guy. I d- I, I don't because you're tight because you just don't go for air. I, you know, you got I, all that bank, and you don't want to. You don't want to. I do all it. my gambling uh, on CNBC. That's where I do my gambling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but good to hear you, Jay. How are you? Tom, I'm doing great. Actually, Tom, it was we had five hours of a poker tournament, and Brad was on all five hours. Can you imagine what you're going through now and trying to extend it out for five hours? He was just fantastic. Actually, a pretty good player, and he had us all cracking up the whole time. Well, that's nice of you, man, and I thank you for, for supporting us. And, and, Jay, you kept it together. We had fun, man, and I thank you for that. And yeah, we're going to yeah, be doing I, it again in April. I just don't know where. Hopefully, maybe back there. Are, are, are you still there, or did they finally discover you're stealing? <laughs> He's not a smart guy. He steals from the cages before the ponies run. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Here's Richard on the Tom Likas show for Brad Garrett. Hello. Hey, doing well. How are you guys doing? Hey, what's up, Richard? Hey, I want to ask you what's your fondest memories of Peter Boyle were. Oh, we love Peter Boyle, man. We we miss him. He was such a great guy. I very unlike his character, Frank. On the, he was really a very, very well read, uh, highly educated, great guy. Political beliefs uh, almost exactly like mine. I love Peter. Uh, uh, we miss him. Ray and I talk about him a lot. He. I, I'll tell you one of my fondest memories. Can I? Uh, is it okay? I mean, of course. I mean, we're on a delay, right? I don't think it's a big. But Peter, God bless him, had a had a, a flatulence problem. <laughs> beyond belief and it was something like he couldn't control you know kind of like my acid reflux or my Tourette's 
But there was this is like in the fourth year, and when he would, God bless him, he'd let one go, you know. And Ray was like, hey, "This is unbelievable! Yeah, it's an audience!" And you know, we'd lose the first four rows, and um, we were waiting for the director to yell uh, uh, action. And one of the cameras were down, and it was, it was Peter, myself, Doris, Ray, and Patty. We were all going to walk into the kitchen and start the scene. And Peter, we're waiting, and we're outside, and. It was just whenever you were waiting to go and do a scene with Peter, it just, you didn't want the clock to tick because he, God bless me, he'd have to let it go, you know? So he lets one out and, you know, it was, you know, Doris's makeup starts running and Ray's, you know, like, oh God, I can't believe this. And Peter, God bless him, turns around and goes, sorry, but I got three more coming. <laughs> And I said to myself, how bad of a problem do you have to have to know how many are left in the chamber? You know what I mean? He knew the number that he would be. But he was, uh, he was a great actor and a, a huge reason why that show was successful. Thank you, Richard. Here's Fran on the Tom Lyka Show for Brad Garrett. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Hi, Fran. Hi, Brad. How are you? I'm great. How are you in Temecula? Oh, I'm wonderful. I have to tell you, Brad, uh, you are, who's, who's Damon? You're everything in that show. I, I just want to know, um, a couple of questions. Uh, how close are you to that character, Robert? Uh, not, not that much like him at all. Uh, actually, which is what was so much fun about, uh, playing him. Um, I, I am the youngest of three brothers and I think my 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 middle and my older brother were definitely more popular and and cooler than me and a lot more attractive so i think i kind of knew what it was like you know growing up as the kid under the sink but um other than that that was pretty much it i, I think the character i'm playing until death now is, i got to say you, don't sell it, yourself short Brett. you are a very handsome man and uh, really yeah, how, how are the like, eyes fran how are the <laughs> eyes <laughs> My second question was, I was going to ask how tall you are, but instead I think I'm going to ask you if you would rethink the marriage thing. Uh, Tom, what, what, what do you think? Usually when they call and they're from Temecula, what am I, what am I looking at here? You know, we always say, yes. hot chicks live in cities whose last name is Beach. <laughs> hey! <laughs> okay. I add about a pound for every mile east of the ocean. <laughs> Well, so Temecula you, is not, I, 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 not I very optimistic. <laughs> well, oh, that's not nice. What do you weigh, friend? Uh, you're sweet, honey. You're, you're sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Believe me, you wouldn't. You would, Long Beach and see you perform out there. I would love. I would love that. I would love that. That would be great. And, and really, please come by and short skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, friend. Hey, this was fun. This come was back great. anytime. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I'm a real fan again, and. And uh, just great to, to see you. Thank you. Great to see you, too. Brad Garrett, Thank this you, Saturday at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach. The shows are at 8 and 10 p.m. You can call the Laugh Factory at 562-495-2844. Go to LaughFactory.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.